The Xbox Series X and Series S both look cool on the outside, but what do they look like on the inside and are they repairable? In this video, I'm gonna take apart the Series X and see what it looks like on the inside and how repairable it really is. In another video, I'll take a look at the Series S and do the same thing, but now it's time to take apart the Series X. Let's do this. Now I will be taking a look at the Series X and Series S controller in another video, so be sure to keep an eye on my channel for that. So I have never taken one of these apart before. I haven't even watched any teardowns at all because I I wanted this to be a fresh new experience for me. So this is all new to me, but it looks like I must start right here. So one nice thing is they don't have the warning saying your warranty is void if you remove the sticker. I like that from a repairability perspective because that doesn't discourage people as much from taking their system apart. So there's one green screw that I see right here and then I'm assuming this back cover comes off. Now, as I am lifting this whole back cover off, I do notice there's a little indentation right there, which means that there's a screw right under here. And with that screw off, the whole thing comes out much easier. It does slide up in here. So when you're removing this, this doesn't pull right off. It slides up in. So you need to lift up the back, pull it out like this. And here is my first look at the Xbox Series X. So right off hand, we've got the disk drive here. This must be the power supply. We've got the heat sink and the motherboard sandwich. And of course the fan up here with the Master Chief symbol. Now one thing I really like right away is that this is all just a nice compact unit that just fits right in here. It's very similar to the Xbox One X. You can see the Xbox One X was designed very similarly with everything fitting in here just right. And everything on these are even labeled. We've got the fan, the disc drive, and the power supply. That lets us get the fan out for this fan connector. I'm gonna pull it out with a pair of pliers. I'm not gonna be pulling on this connector right here. I'm gonna be pulling on the plug-in part of the connector that's attached to the wires. So whatever you do, don't pull on this part of the connector, only pull on this part of the connector. And with that out, we should be able to slide the fan out and we can. So this fan is made by Delta Electronics. It's a 12 volt 0.4 amp fan. We got some part numbers up here, it looks like. And this is the fan for the Xbox One X. The Xbox One X fan was a 12 volt 0.7 amp fan. This fan is much more similar to the Xbox One original and the Xbox One Slim fans. Now, one thing to notice about this fan, it does spin this way. So if we have the fan in here, how it goes like that, it will pull the air through these bottom vents right here, up through the system and out the top. This means it's super important to keep all of these air vents free right here. I definitely don't recommend setting this on the floor because these vents could easily get clogged with hair and dirt and debris. And unfortunately, these holes are plenty big for cockroaches to slip right through. So my first recommendation is to make sure and keep this up well off of the floor. So it looks like next the disc drive has to come out so we can pull up on this part of this plastic backing plate on the disc drive, but there's something keeping it from coming out right here. I'm guessing there's a screw and if there is, it would go right under where this bottom plate is. So we need to figure out how to get that off next. And there is a little locking tab right down here. We just need to pry on the locking tab just like that. And then we can twist off this bottom stand after that stand is removed we can get to one two three four five more screws so i'll be taking out this black screw up here first and then this backing plate comes off and the cover over the connections on the disk drive once again i'll be using my pliers to pry up on the connector itself not on the connector on the disk drive Just like that. Then the disk drive just slides right up. The disk drive for the Xbox One Series X is a DG6M5S-03B. 
the disk drive from the Xbox One X is the DG6M5S-02B. Now, I don't know if these two are interchangeable. That'll save for another video, but let's open these up and take a look at the inside. So here is the Xbox One X, and here is the Xbox Series X. I definitely don't notice any differences at all just by looking at it. Let's take a look at these lasers. And they look basically the same even when I remove those ribbon cables. And the bottom side of each of these also looks exactly the same. Also with the laser removed, you can see all of these mechanisms underneath the laser and they also look exactly the same. That's enough about the disc drives, let's move on to the rest of the console. Now let's take off the rest of the screws around the bottom so we can remove the rest of the inside of the Series X. Now with those screws removed, I'm going to remove this ribbon cable from this connector and from this connector, and then I think I can pull out the rest of the guts of the Series X. Now it is very important to note on this type of connector, it doesn't just pull straight back. You need to get something, some little pry tool and pry up the clip, and then it will just pull right out. Once that cable is disconnected, I'm going to pull it back from the rest of the console. There we go. And once again, we have another connector that has a little bit of a trick to it. There's a little metal tab on the very top of the connector that you can see pushes down. So in order to disconnect this cable, we need to push down on that locking tab. Then the cable will pull right out. Now right offhand, I can already say that I don't like this connector or this connector. They have special locking tabs that are probably gonna get broken a lot. And I can see these connectors being a major problem as far as repairability. Now it's time to get to the rest of the inside of the Series X. So down here, we have a separate board that houses the power button and the eject button. I always like that because if those buttons go bad, then you can just replace this board instead of replacing something on the motherboard. And it's a similar story for this front USB port. This whole board and the port that comes with it can just be removed and replaced on its own. So here we have this little board that's got our Wi-Fi antennas. So if you're having Wi-Fi issues, there's a good chance that there's a problem on this board or even this little Wi-Fi chip right here. I'm gonna take this board off, then we'll get to the power supply. So to get to the power supply, we need to remove these two screws, as well as this screw, this screw, and then we need to remove these three screws from the power supply connector right here. This piece just unsnaps and reveals the power cable right there. After this metal piece comes off, then this screw comes out. After that screw is out, then we need to remove this top shield right here. Then we can remove this shield. And then after that, we can remove the power supply connector here and the power supply connector here. Then we can remove the entire power supply. And here is the power supply for the Xbox One X and the Xbox Series X. It is important to note that all Xboxes, all PS4s, and all PS5s are dual voltage. And the output on the Series X power supply is 12 volts and 5 amps. So we're down to our first main board on the Xbox Series X. We've also got another Wi-Fi Bluetooth board right here with some antennas right here. Next, we'll remove this metal plate and this board right here. Then we'll get down to our first green board. Now it's time to remove this massive ribbon cable. There's a locking tab over here and a locking tab over here. So we need to push those both in at the same time. And then we can pull out the ribbon cable just like that. You can see there's locking tabs on the cable. So when this slips into the connector, this little indent right here will lock with this locking tab right here. And now we can remove this first motherboard. So here is the first motherboard on the Xbox Series X. We've got the USB connections over here. We've got these cable connectors here as well as, well as this huge ribbon cable up here. And then the disk drive connections right here and a power supply connector right here. On the other side of this board 
is this Southbridge chip, and this also shows these ports again. I'm guessing this Southbridge is probably, unfortunately, married to the motherboard. The one thing I do like about having two separate motherboards is if this chip isn't married, then you could actually just replace this if you have, for example, bad USB ports or even a bad Southbridge chip over here, or if there were other components on this part of the board that were faulty. Unfortunately, most likely this chip is married, so we probably can't do that but it is a possibility. Now I'm going to remove this center chassis and reveal the other side of the motherboard. So Microsoft is using more of this viscous thermal paste. That's the same kind of thermal paste they use in the Xbox One X. Now we need to remove this metal plate right here so we can get down to the screws that hold on the X clamp. And there we go. This is quite the serious X clamp. The nice thing about it is we have screws instead of like on the Xbox One, Xbox One X, there is this clamp that you have to sort of like pry off against the motherboard and that can damage the motherboard if you're not super careful. So this is a much better method in my opinion. Now, if you notice while I am unscrewing these screws. This X clamp is bending back the other way. That tells me there's a lot of tension on this part of the clamp, which is holding the APU down to the motherboard and against those solder balls that connect the APU to the motherboard. This is good news because the Xbox One, Xbox One S and Xbox One X have had a problem in the past where the solder balls underneath that APU don't stay connected or they corrode or they crack and that causes major problems with the console and makes it so it's just not usable and most of the time not even fixable. So hopefully this type of X clamp will work much better and it certainly looks like they are taking it very seriously. And with that clamp off we can now remove the rest of the motherboard. Next, I'm going to remove this heatsink so we can compare it to the Xbox One X heatsink. And with all of those screws off, we can remove the heatsink. So here we have the Xbox One X heatsink and the Xbox Series X heatsink. You can see that there is just a massive size difference. Microsoft is definitely taking the cooling on the Series X very seriously. This also looks to be a vapor chamber. I'm guessing that's what the VPR stands for. And at some point I'd like to open this up, but I'll also save that for another video. And here we have the main motherboard on the Xbox Series X. You can see that the thermal paste on the APU looks pretty dry, but that is pretty standard with brand new game consoles right from the factory and generally not really anything to worry about. I do have to note though, it definitely isn't the perfect amount of thermal paste, so I'll have to fix that once I put this back together. Also up in the corner here, you see the Master Chief logo. That's kind of cool. Around the edges of the APU, you can see where the 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 RAM modules are located. The CPU has eight cores at 3.8 gigahertz and 12 teraflops and 52 compute units. I also do have to point out this little BGA chip over here. Unfortunately, this chip is not available anywhere. And if lightning strikes your console and then you have no picture after that, it is likely caused by this little chip right here. Let's take a look at the HDMI port on the Series X. Here is the outside, and this also does have the re-timer chip. That is a very common problem on the Xbox One X, so hopefully on the Series X, they fix that problem. The part number on this re-timer chip does look different than on the Xbox One X, so unfortunately, I don't think the old re-timers are compatible with the new re-timers. Now let's take a look at the installed SSD on the Series X. And there we go. We've got some more viscous thermal paste between the SSD and this plate. This SSD works just like a RAM module or an SSD on a computer. You just remove this screw and it sort of pops up for you so you can just pull it right out. So the SSD in my Series X is a Western Digital and it does show the one terabyte SSD. 
And here is a comparison between the Xbox X series and the Xbox One X motherboards. The APU on the Xbox Series X is a little bit bigger than on the Xbox One X, but even though it's not that much bigger, it puts out a lot more computing power. Overall, I don't see any major repairability issues with the Series X. It's just gonna be a matter of which chips and parts are likely to go bad, and my guess is those little connectors I showed you earlier are pretty likely to go bad when people start taking these apart and trying to do repairs on them themselves. Also, the HDMI retimer chip and that little silver BGA chip on the Xbox One X were pretty commonly faulty components, and since the motherboard on the Series X has both of those components as well, I'm hoping that those are better quality than on the Xbox One X. I really like the X clamp on the Series X. It looks like it's going to put a lot more pressure on the APU against the motherboard. That's always a good thing when the solder balls between that chip and the motherboard are common problems in past consoles. Be sure to keep an eye on my channel. I'm going to do a separate video on this new controller as well as the Xbox Series S. If you want to get shirts like the ones I wear in my videos, you can get them down on my merch shelf, or you can also go to tronicsfixstore.com. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a good one. Now I got to figure out how to put this thing back together.